In many ways, the life of Rex Lapis was a contract in and of itself. Millennia ago, the land that is now Lyra was not so prosperous. The Archon War brought upon much conflict and death to Teyvat, including the region of Guili Plains, where Rex Lapis and his partner, the god of dust Guizhong, ruled previously. Guizhong ultimately lost her life during the wars, and Rex Lapis moved their people south of Mount Tianhong, founding what is now Liyue Harbor. As the god of contracts, his first contract was to cleanse the land and defend the harbor. Even after the conclusion of the Archon War, where Rex Lapis became the Geo Archon, many contracts were enacted for continuing Liyue's protection. To this day, Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, protected by Adepti and ruled by the Qi Sing. Its strong backbone laid by Rex Lapis have even nullified diplomatic maneuvers by the Fatui. He has continued to lead Liyue, where he gives predictions for the future in the annual Rite of Dissension. Nothing can be accomplished without rules or standards. But does Rex Lapis need to continue reigning over Liyue? Has it become too much of a burden for his stern spirit? For even the sturdiest of stones will erode with the passing of time. Liyue has already changed so much since its founding 3700 years ago. Cracks of change have long since started forming. Deities won't be around forever. While mortals have begun to prosper and lead, the Adepti have secluded themselves away from the city. While Rex Lapis descends upon Liyue once a year, it is the Qi Sing that deal with the day-to-day -day happenings in the harbor. There has been a rise in more radical thinking, practicality over ideals. From people like Kuching, who criticizes Liyue's complacent reliance on deities, and instead emphasizes a need for humanity to take responsibility for their own future, to Adepti like Madame Ping, who recognizes the weaker blood of mortals, but at the same time, acknowledges their many strengths. The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? While Rex Lapis continues to endure through his duties, deep down, he knows that his time has already come. Rex Lapis has lived far too long. Simply put, he wants to retire. Being the oldest Archon at over 6,000 years old, he's also the Archon who's held their divine seat the longest, with him and Barbados being the only remaining Archons of the original seven. He's witnessed many Archons come and go, and with each new Archon, the duty of guiding humanity has been honored less and less. How much longer will he bind himself to the original contract? When idle, he tends to reminisce about the past, vividly remembering the taste of Osmanthus wine, and yearning to see the same ones who share the same memories from long ago. For an Archon like him, his time spent with others may feel like mere moments. There are melancholic feelings knowing that he's outlived everyone around him. It's long been overdue for Rex Lapis to make his own departure, but can he himself truly accept this? His experiences while living as the mortal Zhongli has only accelerated his want for retirement. Zhongli walks the earth as a consultant for the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, where he interacts constantly with humans and sees the emphasis on their eventual transition from life to death. Through further interactions, he sees more of the growing leadership in Liyue. He recognizes those who can guide Liyue, such as the intelligent Ningguang, the hardworking Ganyu, and the radical Kuching. He admires people like them and finds their strong and active convictions of change and responsibility to be quite endearing. Does Leah still need their god of old?
until one drizzly day. As I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? The inclination is there, but like a parent whose child has very much grown up, Rex Lapis wants to be absolutely certain that Leah is indeed ready to be without him. And so, he enacts one final contract, the contract to end all contracts. One last test to see how Aaliyah, without Rex Lapis, will push towards the future. Descriptivist is an instance of show, don't tell. People say they are ready to move forward, but what will they do when push comes to shove? The act brings the sudden, shocking, and supposed demise of Rex Lapis, putting the city into confusion and dismay. While Rex Lapis plays his role as Zhang Li, the Qi Sing's inaction to find the perpetrator is met with contempt from the Adepti, who are no longer bound to their contract to protect Liya. With the two greatest powers in Liya in tension with one another, Zhang Li utilizes Child's role of obtaining the Gnosis by putting Liya into further peril. With Child summoning Osile, Liya is once again faced with an attack from a god, but this time without their own god to help defend. <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? Does Leia need its own deity when faced with such threats? The answer is no. Amidst all the conflict and inner turmoil, Leia is able to come together as one to combat the crisis. The people and the Adepti show that they can put aside their differences in unison, and even start to understand one another. Lady Ningguang also cemented her own conviction by sacrificing her precious Jade Chamber, all for the sake of the city. The people have proven that even without Rex Lapis, they can be the pillar that supports Leia. The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. The spectacle is met with great applause from Rex Lapis, and he concludes his duty. The people have demonstrated their strong conviction for Leia's protection and future. He can rest assured knowing that Leia is in reliable hands. The contract to end all contracts is now fulfilled, and he has relinquished his gnosis, signifying the end of his era. I find it thematic that with Rex Lapis's departure, he continues to live the rest of his days as the mortal Zhongli, a fitting name as it can be translated to Time of Departure. As the founder of Liya, Rex Lapis has endured for many millennia, and now, with the people of Liya in charge of their own future, this god of old can finally rest.